Now we're on a ward. So let's see what Gareth, his dad, and a couple of doctors get up to, shall we? Are you okay, love? Yeah, no, I know, I know. Dad. Yeah. What about a game of thumb war, yeah? Mm. They're doing their rounds now. They're next door. How are you doing? Rubbish. Is it getting worse? Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a feel. God, it, it's rock hard. Oh, mate. I think you need to do a poo. Mm. Okay, well, we'll get the doctor to check you out. How is he? Well, he's in pain. His tummy hurts. Got a bad tummy, have we? It's okay. It's fine. No, no, no. It's okay, Gareth. You can tell him. Mm -hmm. I think he can go home tomorrow. <laughs> He's in pain. Where are his bowel charts? His district nurse and support workers always kept them up to date. Gareth, tell Dr. Tetley how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. A little tummy ache isn't unusual after a few days of eating hospital gift shop goodies. People with Down syndrome often suffer with digestive complaints. Don't give him these bananas. Give him some prunes, that'll sort him out. And as for you, young man. I'm 30. What? Ah, didn't catch that. Anyway, it's normal for patients to feel a little blue after a spell in the hospital. I'm sure once you're out and about, you'll perk up again. His tummy's hard, it's not like him. He doesn't tend to suffer from constipation. We just don't know when he last went to the toilet. Can you have a look at him? Yes, he does feel backed up. Like I said, it's not uncommon with Down syndrome. Yeah, OK, but it is unusual for him. So can we give him something to help him? He's in pain. Sure. I'll get the nurses to bring some Movicol. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> okay, let's get some more of that Movicol from the nurse, yeah? It didn't work. Hi, Gareth. My name's Dr. Jones. Nice to meet you both. I hear you haven't been feeling very good. Can you tell me what's hurting? <coughs> oh, wow. Okay, Gareth, I can see you're in a lot of pain. We'll sort this out immediately. Let me just check your history and review your scans. Mm, okay. Will you let me just feel your tummy? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to be scared about. We're going to get this sorted right now. We'll get you some more Movicol to drink and we'll perform an abdominal massage. How does that sound, Gareth? Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work, we'll do a small enema where we'll put some medicine in your bottom and it'll get the poo to start moving again. Any questions? Well, how soon before he starts feeling a bit more like himself? It's difficult to say. It's different for everyone. But me and the team will keep a careful watch over Gareth and we'll continue treatment until he's feeling better. Then we can have a conversation with Gareth about what he can do to prevent this happening again. Really simple things like exercise, watching your diet, fluid intake, um, and adjusting your posture when you're on the loo. Well, that's great. Thank you very much. We, we do appreciate it. Oh, it's no problem. We need to take this sort of thing extremely seriously. Can you say that again? Uh, yeah. We need to take this sort of thing extremely seriously. Dr. Tetley seemed to not understand some of what Gareth was saying. That's fair enough. I'm not going to be mad at him for that. It happens. But I must insist that if you don't understand something a patient says, get them to repeat it, break it down or write it down until you understand. I know the feeling. It can somehow feel rude to ask for clarity more than once. But I would suggest that perhaps it's even ruder to ignore the patient or to pretend you've understood. I make a good point, don't I? That's my job. Now, I told you I'd bang on about this one, but address the patient. Quite simply, it's rude not to. Look, guys, I know you're busy. 
I know your job is stressful. But if the family or carers are telling you something is unusual, then hear them. If a patient isn't a confident communicator, the people closest to them can be tremendously useful, don't you know? Taking the time to hear them out can save you even more time in the long run.